When we think about the future, especially in terms of AI models, like does the rise of large AI models mean the future of AI is, as an ecosystem is dominated by a single general model or one or two single general models? Or will we have a decentralized kind of fragmented ecosystem? I think you have both. I think the analogy of Apple and Linux is really useful here, or Apple and Windows, where you'll have a, one system that is basically fully integrated and closed, and then you'll have another world where people are, are building little, I mean, open source models. And there, you know, some people believe that there's going to be a single dominant model. I'm of the mind that there's probably an interface that, I mean, if you look at Microsoft Jarvis, or you look at Langchain or Fixie, or any of these companies where they take an input and then they are basically a mediator across a bunch of different models for different purposes. I think that's probably going to be the dominant model, at least in the consumer world. And then in the enterprise world, you have, you, you'll have like the Stripe Twilio's who are creating platforms where it's very, very simple for developers to get started with uh, large language models. And then you'll have like full enterprise services firms where a big Fortune 500 just wants the problem solved. I just, I mean, Pepsi needs a generative model for whatever reason. They don't have the discipline. They want the whole thing in a box. And so you're going to have this really nice spectrum uh, of it. I think at the foundational model layer, that's a big boys game or a big girls game just because of the capital intensity required both for training and the GPU access and all those kinds of things. So maybe there's a startup or two that's able to raise a couple billion dollars in order to compete. Um, but I think it's, you know, I think it's more at the application layer. I ran this analysis. So in Web2, if you take the top three clouds and you look at their market cap, so AWS, GCP, and um, uh, Azure, it's about a $2.1 trillion market cap just for the cloud businesses. And then if you take the top 100 publicly traded cloud companies, both on B2C and B2B side, so Netflix and ServiceNow, they have equivalent market cap, about $2.1 trillion for both. So once at the infrastructure layer, once at the application layer, market cap is basically equivalent. The difference is the infrastructure layer, there are three businesses, and at the application layer, there are 100. And so if the analogy holds, then you really, you know, as an investor, it's, it's, it, the odds of success are going to be significantly higher at the application layer because the diversity of needs there is, is greater. I, I'd love that. I, I also would love to, to see that. That's fascinating. Uh, can, can I ask, in terms of, um, you mentioned kind of enterprise usage there. The thing I can't get my head around is like bluntly, some of the biggest companies in the world will not allow the majority of their data to be put through a different solution stored in some cloud infrastructure they've got no idea about. Like, this is some of the most sensitive data they have. If they want to run any form of queries or models on it, it will need to be on-prem in their HQ under lock and key. How do we think about like enterprise access when data access is so core to their needs? Yeah, it's a great question. So there, okay. So Salesforce was, well, Siebel, the, the first generation of software, all the software was run on an enterprise's machines. And Salesforce said, let's move it to the cloud. And we convinced as an ecosystem, everyone that the cloud was safe. And the cloud is also expensive, which we're starting to realize. And so now there's a bifurcation where the data remains in the customer's account, but the application is being run by, by the software company. So you have a separation of the application from the data, the application plane from the control, from the data plane. And I think, you know, we will see sort of, I think we'll see a very similar architecture where the model actually goes to the data and then comes back out with the results. So the data is actually within the customer's account. There's some compute that's been put next to the data. The model is executed and then it goes away. Um, and that way, whoever's managing the model mm -hmm. can update the model, modify it, do whatever they need to. And then at the time the model is needed, it's then deployed and pulled back. So I, I think that's probably a dominant architecture. I think if you're in uh, like finance or healthcare, you'll probably be completely on-prem for the foreseeable future. There are all other kinds, I mean, there are other kinds of issues, like if Copilot produces a bunch of code and you're a global 2000 and that code is actually copyright, copyrighted by somebody else, what do you do, right? Like um, if a model produces a bunch of PII that's like quasi-related to somebody else. So there, there's, um, I put together this presentation on the opportunities for AI startups and one of them is, is this whole bucket of enterprise readiness, like SOC 2 compliance, uh, legal shielding, um, uh, data security. There are all these kinds of deployment models. There are all these kinds of challenges and issues that are associated with them. And there's a big business there, a really, 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 or many multiple, many big businesses to be built there. That's the question. Do you, like, do you think this is a bundled environment? or an, I always think about Jim Bartsdale, um, bundling or unbundling. 
Like, as you said that, there's many different big businesses to be built there, but they could also be bundled into an enterprise software suite. Do you think it's a bundled or an unbundled world in that envisioning? So my learning has been that in early markets, people want bundling. They want bundling because they don't yet understand the tech. The technology moving so fast that most people don't really understand it end to end, but they want the technology to solve a problem. And so they'll get, if, if you're Global 2000 and you want a generative model, you're not yet in the place where you can, most people aren't, say that these are the five different layers, these are the best of breed across the five different layers, and these are the, the sort of the parameters upon which like I'm going to choose best of breed. So the embeddings layer, the two most important things are I don't know, X and Y, right? And at the model serving layer, the latency versus cost. Most people aren't there yet in their level of sophistication because they don't have enough experience with it. So my sense is in the beginning, people want an end-to-end -end solution. Just give me a thing that works, that's simple, and then as I learn what my needs are and what my customer needs are and what I need the software to do, I will break it in a particular way. Then I will go and look for a best of breed in the market and I will swap out that layer. I think that's fascinating and, and like, I'm learning here, so this is great. 